Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I just had to get that out. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you right now, God. We thank you for this night, Lord. We thank you for everything you're doing in this place tonight, Lord. We thank you for each and every lady that came and made their way out tonight, God. We pray that you would speak a word over them, Lord God. Leave them better than what they came, Lord Jesus. Let them leave a new person, God. And Father, I pray that I decrease, that you might increase, Lord, and that your word would be spoken over these women tonight, God. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And God, we will always give you all, all the praise. In Jesus' name. Woo! Hallelujah. So I had the pleasure of speaking on, and you may be seated, I'm sorry. I'm not used to this. <laughs> this is not me, okay? <laughs> I would much rather be right there. <laughs> but to God be the glory anyhow. So I was given the topic to speak on, and excuse my voice, because I've been hollering and screaming. Um, but the topic that I was given was the worth of a woman. The worth of a woman. And so I thought about it and asked, Lord, how do we determine the worth of a woman? And to understand the worth of something we must determine its value. So how do we determine the value of a woman? We're gonna look at a definition, the definitions for both worth and value. So worth, next slide, I'm sorry. Worth is basically the equivalent of a specified amount or the cost of something. Whereas the value of something is measured by its qualities or by the esteem in which it is held. Okay. In essence, worth is the same as saying what something costs and the value of something is why it costs what it costs. So I'm going to try to use a visual aid to help understand what those mean because I had a difficult time understanding it. So if you could go to the first slide for me, the next slide for me. Can y'all see that? All right, do I have any purse ladies in the house tonight? Y'all purse ladies, hold your purse up. Let me see your purse. Let me see what you're rocking tonight. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, mm. Oh, that's real nice. Oh, I like that. <laughs> okay, in the back, I see you with the red purse. Okay, so this purse is a Gucci purse. Anybody familiar with Gucci? It might be out of style now. That was what it was when I was coming up. I, you know, I tell him my age, but that's a Gucci, y'all. How much would you say that that purse is worth? Yell out, yell out what you think. Eight hundred, five hundred. Okay, I have some lows and I have some highs. Okay. For the people that said below a thousand, what if I told you that purse cost twelve hundred dollars? Now the people who lowballed it, do you think that purse is worth twelve hundred dollars? No? Why? It's old. <laughs> Okay, okay. Okay, Michael Kors be different, okay. So the, word, the value of this purse is actually determined by its maker, okay? It's determined by the people or the person who made it, not us, okay? So Gucci says, this purse is worth $1,200. Me personally, I'm not a purse person. I'm very hard on purses. This one in particular, I don't really like the look of it. I have no emotional attachment to it. 
Purses really only serve one purpose, and that's to carry things around. It's not really, it doesn't speak to me. I'm not a purse person, but that's me, okay? Now, I'm going to put up another picture. Let's put up the next picture. Okay. What about this purse? It's the same purse, but how much is it worth? What'd you say? Okay, so it's the still the same. The purse is the same price. It's worth the same, but the value of the purse has increased because of what's inside the purse. You're looking at the same purse. It had the money in it before, but because you couldn't see what was on the inside of it, you didn't know the... You see where I'm going with that? <laughs> so it doesn't matter if we can see what's on the inside of a woman or not. Because in God's eyes, every woman is valuable. Because he put hidden treasures down on the inside of each and every one of us. Regardless of what we look like on the outside. We are so valuable that we are actually priceless. Let's think about, let's go back, let's go way back to the garden. When God created Adam, he had all the food he ever wanted. He had space to roam around, he was free, he had freedom. He had a job naming and taming and claiming every creature. He even had fellowship with the almighty God. But yet and still, God said it's not good for man to be alone. But we know he wasn't really alone. He had animals. He had God himself to fellowship with. But God gave Adam something else that was priceless. He gave him a woman. Women have the ability to take nothing and make it into something. That's priceless. Adam could build the house, but we, we take that house and we make it into a home. Adam, man can give us a seed, but only we, our precious, beautiful bodies, can feed and nurture that seed and then birth that seed into this world as a human being. Ladies, we are priceless. So why then do so many of us feel like we are worthless? I, be I believe it's because the enemy understands our value and our worth, and that's why he fights us so much. The enemy understood Eve's assignment. He understood her worth and her value to all mankind. He understands that we have influence. That is why he went to her first. <laughs> if he would have went to Adam, Adam is, he's, he's here. He's black and white. He's tunnel vision. He, no, no, God said no. But we have influence. God went to her first. I'm going to name a few examples, and I bet you can finish some of my sentences to just illustrate how much influence we have in every area of life. We influence our children, the hand that rocks the cradle. Oh, okay, you know that one. That's influence, okay? We influence our husbands. He might be the head, but we're the, okay? <laughs> so we can influence our husbands. We can influence them in a good way, and we can influence them in a bad way. And I'm not saying that the head isn't valuable all by itself. It has a purpose. It has eyes. It can see. It has ears. It can hear. It has a mouth to speak. But just imagine a head without a neck. <laughs> when a head has no neck to turn, it has limited perspective. Tunnel vision. Women, we a lot of times help our husbands see 
feel and think differently. Not because we manipulate them, but because we give them perspective. And I'm going to talk about manipulation a little bit because it's still influence. It's just demonic influence. Remember Jezebel. Mm -hmm. We absolutely have the power to influence and manipulate any situation and everybody in our sphere of influence. But with that power comes great responsibility. And if you think about it, we only feel the need to manipulate when we don't trust God. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Ladies, we have so much influence with one another, sister to sister. Have you ever heard that women don't really dress to impress men? They dress to impress other women. Okay, so y'all know this, okay? <laughs> Remember that purse demonstration. If we're honest, whether we're in the world or if we're in the church, we typically value one another from an outward, self-centered point of view, if we are honest. We determine who is valuable based on how they look, how they dress, what titles they have, both in and out of the church. We assess people's value based on whether they are working moms, stay-at-home moms, Moms with kids, moms without kids, married, single. Let's be honest. But where in the Bible does it say we have to be clones of each other? We value each other based on our own convictions, our own ideals, and our own traditions. I'm going to tell you a quick but true story. Um, when Pastor Bruce and I were first married, there was a minister's wife in the church who was very integral in the church. She was a praise leader. She was a teacher. She was a preacher. She, you name it, she did it. She was all that in a bag of chips. She pulled Bruce to the side one day, and she said, your wife, Sister Lottie, She's going to be a hindrance to your ministry. Yeah. <laughs> I was confused. <laughs> I really was confused as to why somebody I held in such high standard would say something like that about me to my husband. But I'm very observant. And I observed her. And I watched her. And what I noticed was her circle of ladies, can we call it a click? <laughs> Let's do better, ladies. That's not, God, God ain't in clicks. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But the people who was closest to her, her friends, her sphere of influence, they all were just like her, literally. They dress like, they talk the like, they walk the like. Y'all, they even praised and worshiped God the same. If one was over here and she would start jumping up praising, the other one over there would look and see her and then she would jump up and start praying. And then the one in the back would look and see, oh, they do this. I'm like, uh, really? So, I realized I had a light bulb moment. I know what it is. I don't do what they do. I don't conform to their ideal of what a minister's wife or a woman of God should be. Stop trying to make people be who you want them to be. Romans 14 and 4 says, who are you to judge another man's servant? We can't do that. Who are we? We can't judge another man's servant. It took me years and years to get that thought about being a hindrance to my husband out of my heart, my mind, and my spirit. Sometimes we hold ourselves to other people's standards, which only breeds insecurity because what we're doing is we're comparing ourselves. We have so much influence with one another 
So be very careful what you say to and about each other. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And it also says they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Because comparison, ladies, is a killer. It literally kills who you are supposed to be because you're too busy trying to be somebody else. It creates a false narrative and then tries to force you to live up to that narrative. It's foolishness. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 12. It says, we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. That sounds like social media to me. <laughs> I'm doing this, I'm doing that, therefore, you're sitting back like, oh, maybe I need to be doing this, and I need to be doing that. No. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Again, it's foolishness. When we compare ourselves to others and others to ourselves, it actually devalues our self-worth and our value. Ladies, there is so much value and worth on the inside of each and every one of us that it can't even be measured. We are priceless. When it comes to a woman, if there's a need, we're going to fill it. If there's a problem, we're going to fix it. If there's a hurt, we're going to heal it. We can shift and flex and move and bend. And a lot of times we do it with so much grace, people can't even look at you and tell that you've been through anything. That's priceless. Y'all remember that song, old school people? If you've been through what I've been through, you be up and shouting too. It's funny that that song resonates with so many of us because yes, we have been through just about everything you've been through. And sometimes even more. And a lot of times we don't even know it, what this sister or that sister have been through just even that day. So sis, don't ever let the enemy make you think you're unworthy. We don't have to act like, look like, or be like anyone else. Your value is not on you, it's in you. Again, you are priceless. What has God put in you that you haven't even tapped into yet. It's time for you to see the value in you and the people around you that God has placed in your life. You don't need validation from anybody else because he's given us his name. Think about that. The name which is above every other name. Every name, not Gucci, not Prada, not Birkin, not even your husband's name is above the name of Jesus. You are already validated. I want to talk to my single ladies for a minute. Where you at? Single ladies, Jesus already put a ring on him. You're already spoken for. You're already betrothed. His name is Jesus. You think you need a man with some benefits. <laughs> but the Bible says he loadeth you daily with benefits. You think you want an alpha man. But guess what? He is the alpha and the omega. What more do you need? Don't you ever feel less than because you're single. You are the apple of his eye. You belong to the most high. And everybody and anybody just can't have you. <laughs> Ladies, single or married, you are worth more than precious rubies, diamonds, pearls. You are priceless. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are priceless because the fact that God, the creator of the universe, is the same God that created you, you are priceless. He knew you before he formed you in his mother's womb. He said, I made you, and everything I make is good. No one else can be you but you. 
boo. <laughs> Just seemed right. You can march to the beat of your own drum. You don't have to conform to other people's opinions. His opinion is the only one that matters. Young people, please hear me when I tell you the only opinion that matters about you is God's opinion. Let's look at what the word says to our youth, young women. 1 Timothy 4.12 says to you, young people, let no man, and I'm going to interject, or woman, despise their youth. But be thou an example of believers. How? In word, in your conversation, in your conduct, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. God is literally saying even you, in all your crazy adolescence, preteen, teenage, young adult years, you have influence. You are priceless. You can change people's lives just by being in their presence and living godly. Sounds like influence to me. As a matter of fact, you shame us old people into doing right. When we see you doing right, it makes us think, oh, we better be doing right because we the old folks. The woman of God, you are valuable because you were bought with the price that he paid with his own blood and his own body, the ultimate sacrifice just for you because you are priceless and you are worth dying for. Amen. That's it. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? Do you now know what your worth is? <laughs>